All composite things are like a dream, a phantasm, a bubble in a shadow, are like a dewdrop and a flash of lightning. Thus they are to be regarded. Born January 30, 1943 in Chicago, then 1960, graduated from high school, went down to University of Illinois for, uh, it turned out for two years. Started in mechanical engineering, then the one, the drawing instructor. Uh, whatever I was doing, you know, it, it, it sort of started to encourage me. And then second year uh, in a design course, uh, Victor Court, who's, a, who's a, a member now, and I think I saw his, uh, his, you know, his video, and uh, Richard Lazaro were graduate students there. And then they, they somehow liked the work I was doing and got me into the Cleveland Institute of Art. So I was there, and then the fifth year, <clears throat> Julian Stanchik shows up. And that's, you know, by then it was, uh, you know, pretty much where I was, you know, direction with the painting that I was going. When I went to uh, graduate, I got into University of Pennsylvania. So it was Stanchik, it was Welliver, Joseph McCullough, who I had, he taught a color course in Cleveland, which was the, the, no paint, it was all torn paper. It was exactly pretty much like the Albert's course in, in, in Yale. A lot of times we'd be in a studio, you know, here we would come by, he'd take us across the street to this dive bar, you know, have a couple of drinks and we'd sit and talk. And that's where I started learning about, you know, being an artist. One, uh, one after, the, he said, well, there's an old, oh, a show in New York. He said, we'll, we'll go, go, John. You know, he took us up. So we go into, it's on 57th Street, one of the galleries that were, were down there. Then we go up and we go and it turns out it's a Martha Rothko exhibition. And Piero walks up, we're behind him. He says, Mark, this is Jim and James, painters from Philadelphia. You know, so for a young artist, you know, for that to happen, it was just, you know, started to, every, you know, started to sink in what, you know, what this whole thing was about. Well, at that time, it was, I guess, the, you know, the ambition to try to get, you know, get a gallery, get the work done. When I was in Cleveland, there was Louis Boza. He'd set up this massive <clears throat> setup, still life, in the middle of the room, and you had to work with that from different angles. But then Stanchik came, and there was, uh, I, then I started, I remember I started doing some things with uh, targets, breaking targets up, almost like this series, with Jasper Jones, the, you know, the pieces. And um, there was a, con in Cleveland, they had concourse. You had to do a final project two weeks without, you know, any instruction. And uh, I remember I had to wear three stack canvases, black with cut. And um, there was usually a first, second, honorable. And my painting was turned against the wall. And Stancia came up and he said, that was the best painting, you know, in the show. I guess way back even I remember there's something we'd do uh, with crayons, you know, build up different kind of, not just nice little sections. I remember that a little bit with, you know, drawing and, but even, uh, I guess I, maybe even the, the geometry started at, uh, I had the mechanical drawing class in high school. And uh, I just remember doing it and other guys would come up and say, how'd you do that? And I said, can't you see it? I mean, it's a thing you just have to put them together, and it, this this sort of non nonverbal consciousness. I guess that thing that works on there's color with Elbers. He said, if you see a Coca Cola sign, right? There's this color, and you ask ten people what color it is, you'd get ten different answers. You know how somebody's going to translate what what that word is. There's this thing. You know, there's this color, and somehow this not for me. It's it's a hard thing for, to deal with, but a non-verbal consciousness is w where the color comes through. You know, because mine are not references to, say, landscape or something like that. They're the color, and I guess the closest thing would be the music. You know, I work with the color, it works with me. I, and eventually, there's somehow they, uh, a coalition takes place that it's, it says, okay, I'm... This is it. I'm done, and you know, tells me no, don't you know, don't touch it. 
So you can see the format's going to stay the same, but when I start working on it, then you know, then somehow really a non-verbal sort of I comes, well, let me try this, let me try. Those are the words. It's probably easier for uh, realistic, you know, naturalistic painting. There's a color there, you want to match it. In this case, uh, the color is, uh, is the major, major force. Like I say, Brooklyn started in 1970, because I graduated from University of Pennsylvania in 69. So 70, we moved up to, <clears throat> to this loft in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg. In fact, the Schaefer Brewery was still brewing down the street. You could hear the, hear the noise and stuff like that. And we were there five years. Then we moved to Greenwich Street yeah, in, in, in the 80s sometime. Uh, I think it, there was an exhibition for the, and then Richard Andeskevich, uh recommended that I uh, join the group and was accepted. And um, so that was 80s. And then I, we, it was, I think, when we were on 17th Street when I became a member. Well, I was always reading, reading, uh, Zen, you know, uh, texts and things like that. Then I met the teacher, and, and there was just some sort of, I don't know, electricity with, uh, with Edo Roshi. Just started going on Thursdays, and then um, somehow it, it connected. It didn't get in the way of the painting, put it that way. And the painting didn't get in the way of the, uh, the meditation. And, uh, in fact, certain times in a studio where you get into that, mental set where you just you know lose yourself you're putting your paint on taping there's nothing else to nothing else to worry about you just do what you're doing right there so this one is going to be the edge i'll put on you know i have this border space you know from where the painting starts you know that there's the painting there's this little space and then there's this other reality the information is just the color, you know, and the surface, and I think it's still, it's still a, this difference where uh, I make paintings, not pictures. A lot of people are still into pictures, video, movies, you know, photographs. They still want, you know, still want to see things. It's hard to, re it's hard to relate to this. The philosophy is in, is in doing the work, making, you know, when I'm going to start now, this, this, this. What, what terms could be, you know, put to that? There's the technical things. You see, you, and that, you know, I, when I talk about the work, for me, there's most, the technical things are the things that are really interesting. You know, Lascaux, the, the cave painters, they weren't making pictures to make pictures. And uh, for me, it's almost like a kind of prayer. And then how, how is that? translated over, you know, over the centuries to, uh, to the, the statement from uh, the Japanese artist who was a printmaker, which is showing at the uh, Japan Society here. He said, how does an artist breathe life into his work? By summoning the spirit of art that lives inside him. Power comes from the artist's spirit, warmth from his tenderness and serenity from his prayers. Then I was wondering, what is prayer for the 21st century? For me, it's 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 it relates closer to what was what was the mindset for these Lascaux painters, what 35,000 years ago or something? And uh, how does can that spirit continue? And for me, the 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 clearest way for me is with these uh, with these pieces. <laughs>